House and the 1808 Granger Great Wheel. This is a ghostly segment of our spinning videos because, in fact, this house had a ghost sighting and it's possible that the 1808 Granger Wheel belonged at some point to the ghost. What I'm going to do is explain the basics of the Great Wheel. There's a very large drive wheel and the power to make the wheel go around comes from a woman's hand. And as she rotates her great wheel, not only does the spindle make twist, but the pulley is very small, so it makes lots of twist. So the drive band is a continuous circle made out of cord, beeswaxed, and not only beeswaxed, so it will go smoothly around the wheel. It also has an overlap since it has to be sewn together and you'll see a one inch sewn together section. When the yarn, which is a singles woolen yarn, comes away from the spindle towards my roll of airy wool, it is at an angle. And the angle is very, very important because if it's straight, it will unwind from the storage area of singles yarn I've already made. If it's at a 90 degree angle, it will wind on the tip and you will get no twist. But if you come off at a 45 degree angle, more or less, it will go pop, 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 pop and the twist will run up the shaft of the yarn into the fibers. Can you see them going around? Now there's a great secret to spinning on the great wheel. Basically, there is a big important rule with spinning. Thin spots need more twist. Fat spots need less twist. The twist always runs first to the thin spot. So in order to smooth this yarn out, it's only half yarn right now. And I'm turning very slowly. I'm only adding a little bit of twist because the thin spots need that twist. The fat spots need to be thin. And one of the miracles of long draw is that some of these areas will pull apart in a very elastic way. They're only half yarn. They are not finished yarn. And yet they're not just a fluffy rollock. They have a little twist in them. And long draw consists of taking half yarn and drafting it out when it's in its elastic half yarn state until it is even. That means at that point you're turning the spinning wheel very slowly, but to finish the yarn and make it really strong, firm yarn, you stop drafting and you start adding twist at a much faster rate. This is very manual. There's no treadle. There's no continuous motion. I want to make sure that the half yarn does not get involved with too much twist. So I'm going to have my thumb and finger on the finished yarn to prevent the yarn twist from running in any further into the unfinished yarn. I'm going to go backwards and I want a cone shaped buildup on the spindle. And now I'm back to the angle. I am tugging to see if it's half yarn, and it is. As I turn, I turn very slowly until it no longer will pull away and as elastic. When it is elastic at the size I want, I add twist. That means I'm probably counting 
In this particular case, I want four revolutions once it's down to the size I want. If I'm here, for the sake of the video, I'm not going to make as long a length as possible. I'd probably be standing here. Now I'm at the point where I really have to add another roll or roll log. The twist can't tell the difference between the brown roll and the white roll. I'm going to uh, show you taking a brown roll and joining it to the end of a white roll, which is running out of fiber. And I usually go quite slowly as I do this, especially for the sake of the video. And you can see it's beginning to make a twist from both fibers. I'm going to tug on it a little bit because I want to stretch it a little bit. It's now strong enough so both brown and white have become a single yarn. You can see more twists going into them. I want just a tiny bit more. And now it is ready to be wound on, stored away, and draft it again. And when you get this intersection done, you'll then be spinning on brown yarn. You'll see me finishing it up. You'll see that there's a little thick spot here. This is typical of great wheel spinning. Depending on your fiber preparation and your own personal skill in moving backwards as the twist unites the fibers. And here we have a section that is not drafting for me. Now it is. So I had to move my hand up on the yarn to get close to the bubble that hadn't pulled down to this desired size. And I still am bringing it down very slowly, entering twist into it until it's beyond half yarn to being twisted enough to be finished yarn. And then back on. There's no shame in using both hands and not turning the wheel. And we've used here today a direct drive. That means that the big wheel band goes as a single band around the pulley that makes the spindle revolve. But there are some things to know about replaceable drive heads, which both of these are. One of them is, since it's replaceable, it can easily pull, be pulled out, unless you've got it shimmed, of the drive head post. It has a tapered hole in here. It has a taper here. And you can see that this direct drive had lost its post that goes into the top of the tapered hole in the drive head post. So one was made for it. But I've got to tell you that the person who made it, which would be me, did not get the taper very well matched. So it really moves around and I shimmed it with a piece of tapered wood so that it wouldn't do this when I tug. Sometimes you tug on the shaft of the spindle. But it works with this wheel and so does this one, which is a patented head, miner's head. It really should, it is designed to have these pulleys take the big drive band from the great wheel and have this very large pulley, usually it's black, will have a little short band that goes to the pulley on the spindle. What happens is it accelerates how much twist you can make with one turn of the drive head, of the drive wheel. 
there's something I want you to particularly notice here. This fits the post far better than the uh, replacement um, stick I made here. It does not move around. It really is much more desirable in terms of really sticking in there. Some old wheels, as you look down in there and stick your finger down in there, there are things that have been jammed along the shaft because they were having this problem. Old pieces of cloth, a newspaper from the 1850s. It's always fascinating to see what's in the hole. So either one of these will work. If you're a beginner, you probably want a single band, even with a miner's head, going just to the spindle pulley. This wheel in 1808 had a direct drive because it had not, they had not invented the accelerated, accelerated uh, drive head yet.